I rose Jesus from the grave. Use it. Use it. Use it. Use that power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know who this is for, but it's for me. If it's for you, take it. Hallelujah. surrender Jesus. Hallelujah. We surrender Jesus.
Because you deserve the honor. You deserve the glory. We exalt your name above all names because you're worthy. You're worthy of the praise. You're worthy. to go so that they didn't deviate from the plan that God had at hand. God says the hour of timing is now. You have to follow God through this next season in order for you to get where God has for you to go. The hour of timing is now. You can't walk before God. You can't walk beside God. You have to walk behind God and follow. That means you got to pray. That means you got to get in your word. That means you got to fall to your knees and hear what the Lord is saying to you right now. Timing. Timing for marriage. Timing for businesses. Timing for CDs and albums. Timing. If you launch it before time, it will fail. This is not me. This is God. If you launch it before time, it will fail. Whatever God ordained to happen at your hands happens in his timing alone. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you, dear Lord, for dropping fresh in this place on today, God. Thank you, dear Lord, for such a rhema word is now, God. We thank you, dear Lord, for your timing that you placed upon your people, God. We thank you, dear Lord, for those that you have given gifts, God, that you said the time is now, God, that they are to emerge forward, Father God, and walk in the calling that you placed upon their lives, God. We praise you, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus for all that you're about to do, God. Thank you, dear Lord, that we shall follow you and not me and God. We praise you, dear Lord, that we share our, your, we know you share your glory with no one, God, and we will not steal your glory to take credit for anything that happens, God, at our hands, God. Thank you for the anointing that you placed upon our lives. Thank you for the anointing that you placed upon this house. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing that covers this city, God. We share not your glory, God. We steal nothing from you, God. We honor you for every day that we go without a shooting, God. We let men not rob you of that, God. We praise you, dear Lord, and it has nothing to do with police presence, overwhelmingness, and the harassment of people, God. Well, we thank you, dear Lord, God, that it's your word that are penetrating the hearts of your people, God. We thank you, dear Lord, that it's 
your word and the fruit that comes upon our trees that allow people to see that you are real, God. We thank you, dear Lord, for your God pay love that you're teaching us, that you're using to us, God. We praise you, dear Lord, God, that we'll continue to be those trees, God, that we'll continue to pull them closer, God, that we'll continue to pull them in, God. We thank you, dear Lord, that none be lost, God. We share your heart, God, in the name of Jesus, God, to cover all your children, God, from the eldest to the youngest, God, that they will all know you in the free parting of their sins, God. We thank you, dear Lord, that your people shall follow you, God. They will listen closely to what thus saith the Lord. This we ask in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. If you believe the word of the Lord, I need you to give God the best praise you have today. No, that ain't the best praise. Everyone stand to your feet. Help me out on the monitors. Everyone stand to your feet. I want you to open up your mouth and thank God for his presence. All over this building, give God the loudest, longest, loveliest shout you got. Come on, let's give the Lord a shout. Come on, golden, golden, golden. Golden, I want to hear the voices of the people. Give the Lord a shout if you believe the word of I appreciate you playing, but my word says, let everything that have breath, if you are breathing and you know you should be dead, open up your mouth. hi ya ya Hallelujah. What is getting ready to be is so much better than what has been. Six of you got that. What is getting ready to be is so much better than what has been. What is getting ready to be is so much better than what has been. The best days that you've had in the past in comparison to the worst days that you're going to have in the future are going to be better than the best days that you had in the past. Tell somebody beside you, you ain't seen nothing yet. God is about to blow your mind. But you can't wait till the battle is over. Oh, Lord, you got to shout right now. Because hope that is seen is not hope at all. You got to shout for the house that you ain't living in yet. You got to shout for the car that you're not driving yet. You got to shout for the spouse that you're not married to yet. You got to shout for the loved one that ain't even saved yet. Look at somebody and ask them why you ain't praising him. Go! 
finish y'all lord have mercy to god be the glory to god be the glory come on drummer be the glory for the things he Come on, people of God. Come on, to God. Come on, drama. To God. you came in this morning, you probably noticed that it's raining. Can I give you a forecast for OBC? It's raining in here this morning. Healing rain, deliverance rain, bondage breaking rain is falling in here this morning. Now, you can put your umbrella up if you want to. I say rain on me, Lord. Rain down on me, Lord. Woo! Woo! That was for free. That was for free. You may be seated. Welcome to OBC.
Listen. You're a prophet, man. Let me tell you what happened. <laughs> Y'all remember last week when it was raining real bad? It was just raining terrible. And it was, it was men's Monday. The week before last, it was men's Monday. And me and my sons, true story. Me and my sons in the store and it wasn't raining. And it was, we was coming back out and it just started pouring down rain. And everybody was running for cover and trying to get in. And my crazy son says, Daddy, why are they trying to get away from the rain? Grabbed my hand and said, Daddy, let's run through the rain. Some people trying to get away from the rain. I dare you to grab somebody's hand and tell them, let's run through the rain. Some of you didn't want to run because, let's face it, running in the rain is childish. But can I tell you, unless you have a childlike faith... <laughs> Hallelujah. Just tell somebody God is good. Amen. If you are a visitor here, along with the Holy Ghost of God, you are our special guest this morning. You could have gone to worship anywhere, but you came here. We want to recognize you. If you're a first-time visitor, please stand. We want to put something in your hand from our pastor. And if you are sitting near them, welcome them properly with an OBC welcome. Shake their hand. Give them a hug. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Lots and lots of stuff going on in our ministry. We want to let you know what's going on. Please pay attention to our video announcements this morning. Good afternoon, OBC. Here are your opportunities to get involved and be empowered. Backed by popular demand, HELPS will be having the Loads of Love event again this year. It is on Saturday, February 27th, beginning at 10 a.m. at Family Fun Wash on Magnolia Avenue. We will be blessing families by washing and drying loads of clothes for free. If you would like to make a monetary donation, please see any member of the HELPS ministry. OBC goes to Haiti from April 22nd to April 29th. We will venture as a family to Haiti to provide ministry assistance in health care. You will need a valid passport to attend, so please apply for one now. For additional information and to sign up, there will be a brief interest meeting after service in classroom number one. For more information about today's announcements, 
please visit our website at www.overcomingbelieverschurch.org or you can call the church office at 865-633-9050. And do not forget to download our official church app. It's easy to do. Just search for Overcoming Believers Church, available through the Apple App Store or on Google Play for Android users. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. I'm tired. Praise the Lord. That's, that's when you know you've been at church, when you're tired. I want you to thank God. I want you to thank God for this worship team that led us into his presence. Come on now. That, that fire got started up here. It ended up out there, but it got started up here. And um, I'm just very grateful for you all. I thank God for you all. For those of you that are visiting, we are unapologetically Pentecostal. Not by denomination, but by the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. And so, this is not our experience every week, but we thank God when it is. And so, if this is not your flow or your flavor, it's probably not the church for you. We don't try to make it happen, but the Bible says that there was a woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years. Tell somebody, that's a long time. Now look at that, other, that person right beside you and tell them, you done had some issues a long time too, yeah? And she had issues for a long time. And the Bible says when she heard that Jesus was passing by, she broke the protocol. Because he was on his way to heal somebody else's daughter. But when you need something bad from God, I dare you to look at somebody and just tell them, excuse me, I got to get mine. I, I ain't got time to be bougie and wonderful. I, I know we were supposed to shout at the end after the preaching, but I see him walking past right now. And I ain't going to wait for some skinny man to lay hands on me when Jesus is right here. I've got to get rid of these issues before I leave church today. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> Woo! She grabbed him. Woo! And the Bible says immediately, everybody shout immediately. She was made whole. This is what happened though. After she got hers, she tried to slip back into the crowd because she wanted to steal a miracle, but she didn't want to testify. It's a whole lot of people want to steal a miracle from Jesus, but then when it's time for them to testify, they're quiet. Well, the people that showed up today had some issues before he touched them. And the only thing we did today was testify that he's been good to us so we don't try to make it happen but when God shows up y'all we unapologetically worship him for his presence and so my prayer is that today we didn't offend you but if we did the word of God says offenses will come we didn't try to offend you but we're not going to not offend you and offend him in the process. So thank God for you visiting. My prayer is that you'll be blessed. We do more than shout and we do more than run. We feed hungry people and we clothe those who are naked and we visit those that are in prison and we get guys out of gangs and we set the captive free. And so when we come and we worship him like this, this is a celebration of what he's already done in our life all week long. So thank God for all, all of you. We are, our program is shot, right? It's shot. So it's shot. So we don't know what's going to happen. It was supposed to be one of them cute Sundays where we was going to finish up the worship, the uh, marriage and relationship series. But uh, Dr. E gets up and he starts talking about running through rain and all that. And uh, so we don't know what to do. So what we're going to do now, 
is continue to worship him with our wealth. Amen. We're going to worship him with our wealth. God, God wants more than our shout. He wants our substance. He wants more than our mouth. He wants to sacrifice our money. Because you cannot be in an edifice of this quality. You cannot do what we do in this city just by shouting. It, it, extensive ministry is expensive ministry. And so we're going to ask you to do what God called you to do. No more, no less. All, all, all ministry is, is, um, is expensive. And so uh, we're going to ask you to do what God has called you to do. No more, no less. Don't give any more than God told you to give. And don't give any less than God told you to give. And so we want everybody to tithe. The tithe is a tenth of everything that the Lord has given you. Whatever that is financially, if the Lord is giving you a dime, he wants a penny. If the Lord is giving you a million dollars, he wants a tenth of that million. And so I want you to give your tithe. I also want you to give your offering. You're sowing seed into the kingdom of God, believing God for harvest in your life. Because we don't just give to receive something from God, but every time we give, we do receive something from God. And so I want you to give. But before you do that, and I don't know what we're going to do after this. We may just, I don't know, we may just sing another song, go home, or we may ask, let you ask some questions about Mary. I don't know what we're going to do. Uh, but I'm not going to keep you here all day. We're just going to trust God in, in all that we do. Uh, Reggie, are you here? Come here, man. Come on. I, I want y'all to hear this testimony before you give. So how many of you gave... Um, for First Fruit Sunday, you gave a first fruit. Lift your hands. Praise the Lord, many of you. With that first fruit, you put a well up in Ghana last week. You put a well up in Ghana. And so we started a ministry called Wells of Salvation where, where we are putting wells up all over the world so people will have fresh, clean water to drink. We're going to do that till. I go be with the Lord. And if y'all don't keep doing it after I go be with the Lord, I'm going to come back and haunt you. Amen. Uh, but I want you to know that for those of you that gave, not only did the blessing rest upon your house, but the blessing rest upon this world and this country because of your gift. The word of God says that if you give God your first and you give God your, God will bless if you honor the Lord with substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase, what will happen? Your barns will be filled with and your presses shall burst forth with what? New wine. How many of you have already seen a testimony of the first fruit that you saw? All right. Look at this. I want to show you something. So I don't know how much of this can I share. I, that's what's. How much you gave or how much you got? All right, all right. Can I tell the first fruit where you got the first fruit? Where you got the first fruit? Okay, all right. You know, sometimes, sometimes, I mean, you got to watch these testimonies, you know what I'm saying? Amen. We got, amen. So, this is an X-rated testimony. I'm trying to cut it down to PG up in here, at least 13 or something. So uh, he said, my hold that down, player. Hold that down. Watch out now. All right. So I want you to share a little bit about uh, what took place. What happened is I was teaching on first fruits in, um, in Noonday Bible study. And I always go to Proverbs, the third chapter, verse 9. Honor the Lord with substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy precious shall burst out with new wines. And just so happened in that particular day, I decided to look the passage up in the Amplified. And the Amplified says that we should honor the Lord with our sufficiency or our wealth. And with our righteous living. So the man of God, he came to me and he said, look, I had a first fruit I wanted to give, but I can't give it because of, a ver of one of the verses that you gave. And I don't have a first fruit. I don't, I don't have a job and I don't have a first fruit to give now. And the Lord told me to tell him, the Lord will provide. Uh, that's all. He didn't tell me to give him no first fruit. Lord told me to tell him the Lord will provide. He get, the Lord provided. Did the Lord provide? How did the Lord provide your first fruit? 
Well, the very next day, I had a reason why I didn't, I wasn't working was I got hurt in August, the 18th of last year. So I've been unemployed going through this workers' comp thing. And I've been living by the land. You know, black people, we know how to survive. So, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I've been doing what I can just to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. i just been doing what I can to put money in my pocket. So, <laughs> luckily, you know, the Lord's been blessing me. I haven't missed a meal or a bill since I got hurt. Not only that, he has taken care of every single medical bill. And uh, like you said, my problem was the righteous giving. It wasn't the giving period because every week I had been given $60 to tires and I didn't even make $600 in that week. Well, I came to you because you and your daughter kept preaching or preaching about righteous earnings or labor. And I hadn't had that in since August of last year. So when I came to you, I was a little nervous because I want to be my best at whatever I'm doing. And when you're talking about giving to God, I really wanted to show up. <laughs> so when he came up, I mean, your daughter's son came up, and he gave me $5 after me talking to you before I even made it to the parking lot. I told him I love him, told him, told him thank you, and, you know, I really appreciate it. Well, the closer it got to First Fruit Sunday, I, I'm in a contest every day with myself to be a better me today than I was yesterday. So, <laughs> so I got in the mirror and I was like, man, he's done way too much for me. He's shown me way too much love, way too much grace upon my life for me to just give him $5. I told you that I was going to empty the safe in my pocket. Just to show y'all what type of pastor we got, he looked at me. He said, no, God knows your heart. Don't you do that. He told me not to empty the safe or my pocket. And truthfully and honestly, knowing what I got, I think you taught me how to be a millionaire. If I'd have done that, I'd have got a lot more. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. But anyway, to make it wasn't from righteous living, though. <laughs> That's true, true, true. <laughs> I, I told you not to show everything now. I'm telling you, I'm telling you everything. <laughs> but anyway, so what I done was I decided to take $250 and add it to the same $5 that he gave me. I put it in the same safe that I was talking about empty. I didn't touch it. I didn't spend it. I didn't go get five ones to replace it. It was the same $5 that was given to me. So I gave a $255 first fruit. Well, I sat down at workers' comp next day at 1 o'clock p.m. And that was the day after, February the 1st. In less than 24 hours, the devil was messing with me once again because the laws changed in 2014. So... If you're under the age of 40 and you got a GED and you get hurt on a job, they really don't have to pay you too much. The only thing them people was talking about giving me in all, this is my lifetime medical as well as being hurt, was $18,000. Immediately I got hot. Because <laughs> I'm thinking, like you said, pray for something ridiculous to make him show who he is. Man, I'm talking about $250,000, and these people talking about 18. We're a long way from meeting on common ground. <laughs> so I'm a hot. Immediately the devil's on me, but I mean, needless to say, in less than an hour of sitting there, I presented video, I mean, uh, text messages and things showing how the employer lied. And next thing I know, in less than two hours, my first fruit had, he felt, I felt like $5 wasn't enough to give him. And he felt like a hundred times my seed wasn't enough harvest for me.
But at the same time, though, I'm, I mean, it's a lot to praise about because I'm happy. Y'all see, I'm smiling, and it ain't just because I got gold teeth. <laughs> anyway, he wasn't, like you said, Pastor, he doesn't just bless your finances. The next morning, my mama had a colonoscopy. She had some bleeding going on and was inferred that she had cancer. Well, the next morning, this is February the 2nd. This is 48 hours after me giving you my first fruit. Next thing I know, we go in there the next day after my good news, and the doctor tells her after her being in there for an hour and a half, she was perfectly clean. There was nothing to worry about, and the only thing she had to worry about <laughs> was hemorrhoids, something that all pregnant women do. <laughs> It was nothing wrong with her. She was perfectly fine. <laughs> but he still wasn't through. He still was not done, y'all. <laughs> I got a phone call. I'm from Chattanooga, just like you on 613 Snow Street. <laughs> anyway, I got a phone call from my little cousin in Chattanooga. I got a seven-year-old. I'm talking about she's in everything. She was a, she was picked from her dance team or her dance class to perform in the NBA game next month. So all y'all basketball fans, when you watching the Memphis Grizzlies and the Los Angeles Clippers, that little seven-year-old girl that's dancing at halftime or whenever, that's my little cousin. <laughs> she got blessed off my first fruit. <laughs> Come here, come here. <laughs> come here, though, Pastor. I want to show you something else. I want to show you one more thing, and then I'm going to leave y'all alone because some of y'all might get jealous about my testimony. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know how you even said it. When God got his hands on you, people start hating. <laughs> God been got his hands all over me, and I love him for it. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, Pastor. But like I said, my look, I got another little cousin that just got married in September, and her and her husband has been going through a hard time. He's from Cali, and he ain't been able to find a job. You know, when you've been to prison, nobody really wants to give you a chance. Regardless of what you've done, how much time you spent, whether you repent or not. But anyway, he's been struggling with his job search. And I've been trying to tell him, just keep praying. Just keep praying. God's got something better for you. That Sunday, the same week of my first fruit, before that week was even over, I got a text message from her husband that says, Hey, man, God is working. <laughs> I've got a job and other jobs calling me with good-paying jobs now. <laughs> My faith and hope is getting better, man. When he texted me that, I texted him and said, I told you. I gave him my first and my best and he's blessing the rest. The only thing he could text me was 100. Thanks, man. Get off my stage. Touch five people and tell them he gonna do it for you too. a miracle and say neighbor I got a feeling that everything is gonna be all right somebody shout yeah somebody 
Come back up here. Has everybody, listen, has, has everybody prepared your seed? If you have prepared your seed, just stand straight up. If you do not have a seed to give, you want to give a seed, but you don't have a seed to give, wave, wave. If somebody is waving, I want you to put the best seed you've got in their hand. If somebody is waving. I want you to put the best seed you've got in their hand, everybody. It's, it's a young man where you barely can see him. He's way back there. Put a seed in his hand. I'm sorry. The Holy Ghost has done a new thing. And uh, hallelujah. God hears and answers our prayer. Look behind you. God hears and answers. I pray. Hey, Brandon, I need you on that organ because uh, I believe uh, we're going to tear the club up in just about six seconds. All right? This is what I need you to do. All right? Uh, whatever slow song y'all about to sing, uh, it ain't happening. Amen. Uh, Ty, come. Everybody come that, can, uh, that, that you can stand yourself singing in the shower. Come. Uh, come on, let's, let's, uh, we about to, uh, we about to give and worship. Yes. Amen. Uh, the Bible says, uh, prophetess, uh, that every six steps, <laughs> as they were bringing the ark back to the Lord, every six steps, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, they would, they would take an ox. And they would cut his throat and sacrifice. And the Bible says they would dance. Then they would pick it up again and take another six steps. All the way from Obed-Edom's house to the city, to the city of David. In other words, what they were saying is, we're not going to praise you when we get there. We're going to praise you along the way. Uh, tell somebody you might want to scoot over some. Tell somebody besides you might want to take them shoes off. Yeah, I hope you wore the cheap makeup today because it's about to run. If you got a weave, you might want to tighten up your tracks right now. Because we're about to give God the best gift and the best praise that we've got. I want you to take that seed. Watch this. I want you to lift it in the air and say, God, this is my seed. I'm sowing it unto good ground. OBC is good ground. As I give, it shall be given back to me. Good measure. Press down. Shake it together. Run it over. Shall men and women get ready? Give unto me. Wave that seed in the devil's face. Y'all ain't waving it. And shout, I will never be broke another day of my life. Now, if you believe that, open up your mouth and fill it with a praise. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to bum rush the altar. Move. I want you to bum rush the altar and throw your seed on the altar you sow your seed God is blessing your house come on somebody let's give him some praise come on and give God praise in this place how many want to people want to put a praise on it how many people want to put a praise on it how many people want to put a praise on it we came to give him glory we came to give him honor we came to give him praise Praise. Hallelujah. 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 Halleluj
praise on it. There's a miracle in this room with my name on it. There's a breakthrough in this room and it's here for about me. To leave. Let this be our last worship song. Come There's on, a let's miracle let's in this God room. Praise. Let this be your last with my song. name all on over it. the building. So I tell you what I'm going to do. So I'm going to put a prize on this. I'm going to put a prize on this. Will you help me put a prize on this? I'm going to put a prize on this. There's a miracle in this room. With my
feet specific. What is a praise? A praise is opening your mouth, right? A praise is putting a dance in those feet. A praise might be clapping those hands. So we're praising God. We don't have to look around and see who else is giving a praise. Because I don't know about you, but he's been real, real. Real, real. Real, real. Real good to me. So if you won't praise him, Because the God I serve has been that good. The God I serve has been that kind. So give me some room while I praise him. If you need to grab a partner, I dare you to praise him. Even if you have to praise him by yourself. that I promise you but just hold on every head is bowed every head is bowed just a second I promise we come back to that stop it every head is bowed every eyes closed just hold it really really hold on every head is bowed really hold on a second every head is bowed every eyes closed and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. We heard about his goodness through so many testimonies today. How he not only can bless your wealth, but he can bless your health. But today, listen to me, man. There's some people in here, you got good health and you got good wealth. Listen, but you don't have him. You're healthy and you got some money, but you don't have him. So you don't even have a testimony. What shall it profit the man to gain the whole world then lose his own soul? So God, I appreciate what you've done. But the greatest gift is not your presence here today. The greatest gift that you could give is to give another soul to the kingdom of God. So God, I'm going to ask you to save today. Save my brother. Save my sister. I pray that nobody leave out of this place not knowing if they're going to heaven or not. My brother, my sister, I offer Christ to you. I offer Christ to you. I don't care what you've done last year or last month or last week or last night. God will save you today. You could be a crip, a blood, a gangster, disciple, a vice lord. You could have a hymn book in your car or a butcher knife in your glove compartment. God will save you today. You could have a record from here to L.A., but God will save you today. 
So if you're saying, when I get my life right, I'm going to come into the kingdom, you'll never get your life right until you come into the kingdom. Church people may not forget your past, but God will forgive you of your past if you receive him right now. So my brother, my sister, if I'm talking to you, if you're 99% sure that you're saved, but there's that small percentage that say, I'm not sure if I'm going to go to heaven or not, I'm talking to you. If you're in this place and you say, Pastor, I'm saved, but I need to be under, under a covering. I need to be in a church home, man, and I, don't, I'm, I ain't in a church. Or I'm in a church, but that church is not meeting my needs, Pastor. This is the place where I need to be. I'm talking to you. Third group of people, you're saying, Pastor, I'm saved and I'm in a church, but my church is in L.A. or my church is in Florida or my church is in Memphis. My pastor is in Atlanta. It's in another city, and I'm going to be here a few years. I want to come under watch care. I'm a college student, or I'm here working for Y12, or I'm here in the military. Pastor, I need to be up under a covering until I go back to my other church. If you're in one of those three categories, you're being saved. You're coming up under this mem membership or you're coming under watch care. When I count to three, I want you to squeeze somebody's hand. I'm not going to give you the mic. not going to ask you to testify. not going to put any chairs out and ask you to sit on them. I just need you to respond to God today. I just need you to respond to God. And somebody's saying, well, he ain't even preached. I didn't have to preach. God did the preaching today. That man of God testified and he preached today. The worship team began to sing unto the Lord. They were preaching today. The musicians were playing under the anointing of God. They were preaching today. The person that decreed blessings over your life just a few minutes ago that you're sitting next to, they were preaching today. The question is not that the preaching go forth. The question is, will you respond to it today? My brother, my sister. I offer Christ to you. If you're in one of those three categories, when I count to three, I just want you to squeeze somebody's hand as tight as you can as though you're squeezing the bloodstained hands of Jesus Christ himself. Don't let the enemy keep you another day of your life. One, don't let the devil have another second of your life. Two, pride come up before destruction and a halted heart before a great fall. Are you ready? Three, squeeze that hand if I'm talking to you right now. Pastor, how do I know if you're talking to me? Because there was some butterflies swimming around or flying around in your stomach. You felt something in your stomach. That was your body telling your spirit that your soul needed to be saved. My brother, my sister, I offer Christ to you. Father, I've done all I can do. No man can come lest he be drawn by you. If somebody squeezed your hand, I want you to lift that hand straight up all over the building. Lift it up, 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 lift it up. Hands are going up all over the building. Hands are going up all over the building. Keep those hands up. Keep those hands up. If somebody lifted your hand or you lifted theirs, I want you to come to this altar. Let me pray for you real quickly. Let's seal the deal. Come on now. Don't make them come by themselves. You go with them. Come on.
Father, in Jesus' name, I believe by faith that this day was ordained just for me. I believe by faith that Jesus Christ died for my sin, that I might have life and that life more abundantly. I'm saved. I'm saved. And I'm safe in Jesus' name. Amen. Would y'all give God praise? Because I want you to praise God for all the souls that just came into the kingdom. We give you all. This is what we're going to do, baby. Come on. We give. We give. This is what we're going to do. We worship. This is what we're going to do. Come on, baby. It is appointed unto man once to die. And then the judgment. Well done. Thy good and faithful servant. While we were worshiping, I knew 
something was weird about this service. My wife just told me my spiritual dad just died. The Lord giveth. Elijah cannot operate in the double portion of Elijah until Elijah leaves. So I say to you, how great thou art, God. Dr. T.L. Lowry, my dad is with Jesus. He told me, Daryl, refuse to rust out. I want to burn out. And his fire just went out. But he lit us before he left. Thank you for praying for me. I'm good. We are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony. And we love not our lives, even unto death. Jesus name Amen We are finished but we have some friends here that I want to close us out come on come, Dr. E I want you to come with them we're finished I, man God you're good and uh, Dr. E I want you to introduce them they're gonna they're gonna I, I need you to stay with me and um they're just going to make an announcement, and after they get finished making an announcement, y'all go home or do whatever, but God is good. Don't worry about me. Don't worry about me. I got that man's anointing. That, I got his anointing. Amen. Dr. T.L. Lowry has raised six people from the grave. He's prayed and People who were not born with eyes, their eyes grew back in front of thousands of people. He's prayed and laid hands on a man who had just a nub and his whole leg grew back in front of thousands of people. More people than you can think have come into the kingdom because of him. Every major Pentecostal preacher you know on TV made it because they got drops of his oil on them. So I thank God that the Lord allowed him to preach in every church we've ever had service in. And to hear that man the last time he preached here say, son, I'm so proud of you. I never forget those words. So pray for me. Pray for my spiritual sons and daughters. They probably will take it worse than I will. Pray for our congregation because we were covered by a great man. A great man. God bless you. I love you. God bless you. Family, I want to introduce uh, Pastors Mike and Andrea Brewer. They're with Reach Haiti Ministries. If any of you have any questions about our upcoming mission trip, we're going to be outside uh, at a table, we have applications, we have passport applications if you need help getting your, your passport. But I uh, just wanted to introduce them. And if you're interested, please come see us because TikTok, TikTok time is running out. Uh, the end of April will be here very soon. Any questions, come and see us. You are dismissed in the name of the Lord. We worship you, our Lord. You
all my sons, my spiritual sons and daughters, I just need to hug you. I know this is going to be a rough day for you. So my spiritual sons and daughters, especially those that are ordained and licensed by Dr. Lowry, I want you to come. Let me just hug you. We worship you. 